All right, today we're talking about motion in one dimension. This is sometimes called kinematics. So we'll start today with talking about kinematics or motion in one dimension. Next time we'll talk about motion in two dimensions. So uh, like projectile motion, stuff like that. But suffice it, we'll start with one dimension and ramp it up for next time. Um, three terms we need to define here, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Your displacement is simply your change in position. If you end up in a different position than where you started, the straight line distance between the two is called your displacement. Now we've got to compare and contrast this to distance. If I travel in one complete circle and end up right back where I started, what is my displacement? Yeah, it's zero. So, but have I traveled the distance of zero? No, I've traveled 2 pi r, the circumference of a circle, that's distance, but my displacement is zero. So here, displacement is what we call a vector. We talked about those last time. So, and being a vector, it has both magnitude and direction. So whereas your distance is just a scalar, it has no direction associated with it whatsoever. So in similar fashion, we'll talk about velocity. So, and velocity is your, your displacement over time. So how far you are from your original position over how long it took you to get there. Uh, in this case, velocity is also a vector. So it has both magnitude and direction. If I told you I was doing 20 miles per hour in my car, that is a scalar. If I said I was doing 20 miles per hour due south, that is now a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. So velocity, we also got to compare and contrast that to speed. Speed is the scalar equivalent, so to speak. So if I said I'm doing 20 miles an hour, that's a speed. There's no direction associated with, with it whatsoever. But velocity has a direction. Finally, we've got to talk about acceleration here. And acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. You have an acceleration when you're either speeding up or when you're slowing down. If you're speeding up, we use the word acceleration pretty commonly in the vernacular. If you're slowing down, we say that you're decelerating, you have a deceleration. So in physics, we don't really talk about deceleration so much, formally anyways. We just talk about having a negative acceleration. It just means your acceleration points in the opposite direction as your velocity. So, but it's just change in velocity over change in time. So if you are moving with a constant velocity, what is your acceleration? Yeah, it's zero. If you've got a constant velocity, that means you've got no change in your velocity, and so your acceleration comes out to zero. This will be important later in the semester. So when you hear a, a problem talking about moving at constant velocity, you're supposed to immediately clue into that means you've got an acceleration of zero. That'll be important later on. All right. So by the way, acceleration also a vector has both direction and magnitude here. So what is the SI unit for displacement? It's the meter, so it's a length, if you will, so meters. Velocity, meters per second, and acceleration, well, velocity itself is meters per second, and time is second, so it's meters per second per second. Sometimes written as meters per second squared, but I like calling it meters per second per second, more formally written as meters per second squared. And we'll see that I'm going to ask you to do this all day long today. Meters per second per second rather than meters per second squared here. We'll see why that is in a, re, uh, in a few moments here. Let's start with number one. So a car accelerates uniformly from 20 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour in three seconds. What is the magnitude of its acceleration during this time? And it's simply just the definition of acceleration here. So acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. Your change of velocity is always final minus initial. So that's 50 minus 20, and that's in miles per hour. So nice, lovely American units here, all over a time of three seconds. And so in this case, yeah, what are our units here, though? 30 watt. I'm sorry, 10 watt. Miles per hour per second. So notice it has units of velocity per time. In this case, velocity per second. So, and I wanted you to see that back here with meters per second is velocity per time second. When you look at it as meters per second squared, a lot of students totally don't realize what's going on here. But what this acceleration means is we're just going, increasing our speed 10 miles per hour every second. So notice if we kept this acceleration up, how fast would we be going one second later? 
60 miles per hour. Another second after that, 70 miles per hour. Every second, we're increasing our speed by 10 miles per hour. If you can look at it, we start using metric units the same way. So it will save you a lot of heartache. Understanding this will make your life a lot easier. All right, let's look at question number two. Question number two says, a man travels 60 miles to work with an average speed of 40 miles per hour. He travels home the same route, another 60 miles, uh, with an average speed of 60 miles per hour. And the question is, what is the average speed of his round trip? So in this case, it is very tempting. You're like, oh, going this way, his average speed 40 miles per hour. Going back, his average speed, 60 miles per hour. And what might you want to say the average velocity or average speed in this case is? Yeah, 50, and you'd be totally wrong. And the key is this, he's going to travel this 60 miles more slowly than he travels this 60 miles here as he's going faster. And since you spend more time traveling at a velocity, or in this case speed, I should say, of 40 miles per hour, then your average is going to be closer to 40 than it is to 60, as we'll see here in a little bit. Notice it's also important in this problem that we're talking about speed. They, these were given as speeds. I'm writing V, but they're speeds. So, and that's important because if I said, what's the average velocity of his entire day? You should say zero. Why? Yeah, because he starts at home, he ends up back at home, and therefore his overall displacement would be zero. So that's why we're talking about average speed here rather than average velocity. So we're looking at distance over time rather than displacement over time uh, in these velocities. All right, so if we look here, to get our average speed, we want to take the total distance. If I can spell that, let's try that again over the total time. So and we can kind of divide that into two parts here. So if we look here, velocity is delta x over delta t. If we rearrange our definition of velocity, we can see that delta t equals delta x over v, which in this case, 60 miles over 40 miles per hour. And that's going to take us an hour and a half. Do the same thing for the way home. This one's a little easier to see. Hopefully, you can kind of see 60 miles at 60 miles per hour. And the time here is going to be one hour. So in this case, we get our average velocity here. That total distance to travel 60 miles there, 60 miles back is 120 miles. And the total time here, an hour and a half to work and an hour home. 2.5 hours, and you can see that this is not going to come out to 50. Anybody get me an average of speed here? Yeah, 48 miles an hour. So again, as we said before here, you're going to spend more time traveling with a speed of 40 miles an hour, and that's why the average is going to come out closer to 40 than to 60.